I would like to begin today by welcoming you all to this wonderful venue and to say a big thank you from my wife, Fiona, and Ryan's parents, Chris and Tracy, for taking the time and effort to join us to celebrate Kirsty and Ryan's special day. We know that many of you have made long journeys to be here today, and I hope you have a great time. I would also like to say a special thank you to all the staff at Seam Hall for making this day the special occasion it deserves to be. I have the pleasure of making the first speech and being the warm-up act for Chris, <laughs> Ryan and Scott, who I know are anxious to speak to you today. <laughs> Just a couple of words of advice, Guy, before making a speech. ABC, always be confident. <laughs> and more importantly, XYZ, examination. <laughs> Wedding days are meant to be unforgettable, and this one I'm sure will certainly be. I, for one, won't forget how heartwarming it was to see these two lovely people making their vows to each other this afternoon. And I won't forget how proud it has made me feel to be the bride's father. And I won't forget what a pleasure it is seeing them now sharing the happiness of their great day with us all. I would also like to thank everyone who has helped out on the lead up to the wedding in whatever way, large or small. You've all played your part to make the day possible. No doubt names will be mentioned later on. <laughs> So important, in fact, that in the run-up to today, Kirsty and Ryan had a bit of an issue with the seating plan because they really couldn't decide who to seat where. So as father of the bride, I offered to step in and help work something out. What we finally decided was to use the wedding present list and to put those who bought the largest items nearest the front <laughs> So if you can hear me at the back, <laughs> over there, thank you for your gifts. Also, a thank you to David and Julie for the oven glove. And Kirsty says, may she have the other one for their first wedding anniversary. <laughs> now, I believe tradition dictates that a dad should share a few stories about his daughter. I know that Kirsty is particularly nervous about what I might say in this next part of the speech. After all, it is part of a father's job description to embarrass his children. And I've been particularly successful at it over the years. But you can relax, Kirsty. I'll wait till we're on the dance floor before I start today. <laughs> Sorry, Kirsty, just kidding. What can I tell you about my wonderful daughter, Kirsty? Today, I am the proudest man in the world. Seeing my beautiful daughter looking so happy and radiant is a truly amazing experience, but tinged with a little sadness. For those who know me well, being generous does not naturally come to me. <laughs> it fears me just a little in the ceremony when I had to give her away. <laughs> Whilst preparing the speech, I became a little sentimental and decided to look through some old photos of Kirsty. And I have to admit, the tears welled up in my eyes and one picture stood out from all the others. It was a striking pose of my precious daughter, arms outstretched, trying to stand up on those little wobbly legs. Sadly, it's the only photo we have of her the first time she came home drunk, so it's it. <laughs> Kirsty is a wonderful daughter. She has provided Fiona and myself with so much joy and happiness over the years. And yes, a few tears. I remember driving through the night to University Digs to rescue a tearful young lady who had lost her bank card and had no money, however. I suppose that's what does it for. And yes, for the record, Kirsty, I've had no money ever since. <laughs> the lovely young lady you've become. It has been an absolute joy for me to watch a very talkative, extremely inquisitive, and often clumsy little girl <laughs> develop into a very beautiful, clever, loyal, and loving young lady that was my honour and privilege to escort down the aisle today. Now, like most fathers, I'm extremely protective of Kirsty and prepared to fend off any potential suitors. I took the view that no man was good enough for my girl. I was in fear of capital punishment for anyone who tried to take her away from me. And so it was with this welcoming atmosphere of open-mindedness I was first introduced to Ryan. I know that tradition dictates at this point I'm supposed to welcome Ryan into our family today, but the truth is, from day one he's been like a son to us. By that I mean he's been eating my food, drinking my beer, <laughs> using my gas, water, electricity for the last few years. <laughs> it certainly didn't take long for Fiona and myself to notice that Kirsty was really smitten by this young man. And when he started letting me beat him at golf, <laughs> we knew he was getting serious too. <laughs> now I know some of you know Mark, uh, Ryan is a man of few words when it comes to announcements, speeches, etc. So when Ryan asked my permission to marry Kirsty, 
wasn't the usual formal request like, may I have your permission to marry your daughter? Or no, Ryan's request, which by the way was made when I was driving him yet again to play golf, and I quote, I would like to buy your daughter a ring. <laughs> now my immediate thought was, is he referring to an earring, a nose ring, a curtain ring, or something else? My answer was simple. I said, about time so. <laughs> no, sorry, I said, yes, you can. I make her happy. So here we are today. You often wonder as a parent just how well your children will turn out. You wonder what sort of life decisions they will make, especially those you have no control over. What friends will they choose? Who will they pick as a partner to share their life with? Will that person love and care for them as well as you would? Will you approve? Well, for what it's worth, Percy, I think you've made a cracking choice. I do have a one final pleasurable responsibility to fulfil. Just before I do, ladies and gentlemen, you may or may not notice a TV screen when you enter the building today. I would like to inform you about a certain DVD that's been created to celebrate the lives of these two wonderful people. It will have its UK network premiere after the meal today, and I hope you will enjoy the viewing. I will be taking orders for copies of anyone's interested after the viewing. <laughs> Prices, by the way, are not negotiable. <laughs> Kirsty and Ryan, may your marriage be a truly happy one. May you begin with an unforgettable honeymoon in the Maldives in Dubai. May you have a long and wonderful life together. I am also sure that the loved ones who are unable to be here today will be wishing you all the best in this new chapter in your lives together, with fond memories of them in your hearts. It is therefore my very great pleasure to propose the first toast of the day to the happy couple. And I'll see if I can stand on my feet for this one, guys. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, could I please ask you to be upstanding and propose a toast to the bride and groom to Kirsty and Ryan. Thank you. Of myself and Tracy, may I not that bad yet? On, on behalf of myself and Tracy, would like to thank everyone who's here for actually making this such a special day. It has been excellent so far, and I'm sure tonight it will continue on and it will be brilliant. I might be ad libbing a little bit. Now, a special word of thanks from ourselves goes to the wedding planning party. Now that's especially Steve, Fiona and Kirsty. But of course that wouldn't be right, would it, without mentioning the input, invaluable input, from my son. <laughs> I do believe that at certain points in time he was asked to come and actually see things and I think the comment might have been, yeah. sorry, is there not a golf match on? <laughs> but I'm sure he's here in spirit if nothing else. <laughs> Now, on a little bit more serious note, I'd like to mention a few words about my son. Since he was born, both myself and Tracy have had a special boy who has now been passed on to Kirsty. He's now grown from being a little boy into a little bit of a bigger boy, as you can see. And he's a wonderful, caring son that we both love very much. And today is one of the proudest days that we've had as we've seen him marry the love of his life, Kirsty. It ends now, what did you suppose to say there? I'm sure. No, I'm only joking. Today, not only is the proudest day, is we've had a beautiful son who we love very much for the last 24 years, but today we've gained a beautiful, as I'm sure everybody will agree, daughter-in-law, kind, caring, and considerate. And that is what we love about her. So the two of you, I love you both very much, have a brilliant day and a brilliant life. And what we'd like to do now is everyone be upstanding and raise a toast. <laughs> and the toast is to Mr. and Mrs. Merlin. <laughs> now, Scott. <laughs>
Hello everybody. Um, Hello. Hello. Mine stays along the same lines as everybody else's. There's a lot of thank yous and such, but I'll give it a go anyway. I would like to thank you all for coming here today, especially everyone who has travelled from far afield to share this day with us. I would also like to thank you all for the gifts that we've received. But I'm sure Kirsty would agree with us, the biggest gift we can receive is everyone being here today. I would like to start with a thank you to Kirsty's mum and dad, and my mum and dad, for helping us organise today. But the big thank you must go to both pairs of mothers, because without you two, we certainly wouldn't be here today, and the people that we are. So as a sign of thanks, we have a lovely little gift for yourselves, which I'm sure someone is just bringing through the doors. <laughs> For a lot of you that have known me and Kirsty, we were both 17 when we met. In fact, it was the 25th of May 2009, in case anyone wasn't sure. I had been back from Whitcomb for around three hours, and after setting my eyes on Kirsty, I'm sure most of you will know the smell of canvas irresistible to females, and no more than it was to Kirsty. I knew from that moment that one day I would be stood here in front of all of you, completing this speech, I suppose. My biggest thanks of everything has to go to Kirsty. One for being here, two for looking beautiful and brilliant today, but thirdly for actually agreeing to marry me because I didn't think anyone would. <laughs> the other thanks has to go to Scott, who has been the best man that anyone could ask for, from picking up the suits to taking me yesterday to drop the dog off at the vet when I was meant to be at the pub having a few beers with the family. But thanks mate, you've been brilliant. Apart from the feathering on my stag do, but that's a completely different story. <laughs> Finally, the thank you goes to the two bridesmaids, Beth and Charlotte, and Mia. <laughs> They've been a great support for Kirsty during the last couple of years and have kept Kirsty organised just about everything here today. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you all to be upstanding and raise a glass to my beautiful bride, Kirsty. <laughs> to Kirsty. <laughs> I will now hand it over to Scott. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep up with you a little bit. Just to... <laughs> Shut up, love. I've got the rings. Don't worry about the rings. I've got the rings. Obviously, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to thank you all for attending my best man's day. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's fantastic that the pair be decided to dress up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to compliment Beth and Charlotte on how beautiful they look today, and also for the um, great job that they've done. Well done. For Peter has been an usher, although you needed a bit of help on that one. I don't know who's going here. <laughs> In boots, yeah, definitely. And also to Mia and Jack for being Paige Boy and Flower Girl. Well done. <laughs> However, the ladies were only outshone today by the beautiful bride, and you do look amazing. As opposed to Brian, who looks like he's won on a tombola. <laughs> My name is Scott, and it's an honour and a privilege to be asked by Ryan to be his best man. To be honest, mate, I wasn't too sure, but when I found out that I could keep the shoes, that swung it for us. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tracy asked me a few years ago if I would look after Ryan and make sure keep him safe. I took that quite literally and bought the house across the street. <laughs> However, Kirsty doesn't appreciate the binoculars. <laughs> but I, I am just keeping a good eye on it. <laughs> Now, as you probably noticed, there's an age difference between Ryan and myself. But you'd never guess, would you? <laughs> never guess. One of us has retained our youthful charm and good looks, and the other one looks like they've let themselves go. <laughs> May it sort yourself out. <laughs> Just take a quick drink there. <laughs> Now, 
Now, Ryan and I know each other through Scotland, but we didn't really become friends until he was old enough to drink. <laughs> it all began in a pub, whose name I won't mention, for legal reasons, of course, but it was on Pit House Lane in Leanside. <laughs> now, Ryan, being the cocky 15 year old that he was, thought it would be a good idea to challenge someone eight years a senior to a drinking competition. <laughs> and that would be the top row, then the uh, bottom row, then the top row. Now, if any of you are familiar with this pub, you'll know that the bottom row is enough to take out an elephant. <laughs> now, as a, responsible adult, uh, as a responsible adult, I said yes. <laughs> However, I was very disappointed when the challenge was cut short halfway through the bottom row. The lad had had enough, fair play to you. You weren't ill, but I don't believe it for a second. I believe it was a well organised web of lies and deceit to pocket the change from the 20 quid you got off your dad. <laughs> <laughs> now, as mentioned in, just before that, scouting is the reason for us two being mates, along with a lot of us in this room. Now, we all know that Ryan isn't fond of manual labour, and I think that was, on the statue we found that out as well. Although he did, he did go around a bar and collect all the glasses in. Um, now, Particularly the scout camps, it includes the loading and unloading of the wagons, setting up camp, erecting tents. We will literally do anything to get out of it. <laughs> there are plenty to choose from here. The list is endless, but there's one in particular that stands out. 2014, we agreed to travel together. In a car, I'll say, I'll drive, no problem and we'll share the same tent to make things easy. So it was all going according to plan until we arrived at camp and then Ryan suddenly realised he'd have to do some manual labour. No sooner had the tent got out of the car, Ryan was away asking lads if he could share. <laughs> Leaving me feel used. <laughs> now, being as generous as I am, not as generous as this of course, but never mind, I've got a couple of gifts for you to remind you of your journey together to this point. Now, now think, the scene was set. A beautiful starry night. Nothing but the sound of water flowing gently like a stream. Except it wasn't. The stars were floodlights, and the sound of the stream was someone filling their car with petrol. <laughs> Whilst you first set, on, set eyes on each other over fence houses service station forecourt. <laughs> <laughs> now, love was in the air. Or is it petrol fumes? Nobody knows what we've got here today. Anyway, it's a little gift to remind you of that first day. Now we'll fast forward to 2014 and on a holiday to Mexico where Ryan and Kirsty got engaged. It was the best day of Kirsty's life when she told Ryan to, engage, to, to propose to her. <laughs> I messed that one up, didn't I? Never mind. A little bit short, but I've got another gift for you to remind you of your time in Mexico. <laughs> now, to be honest, that's not the only gift I've got you. <laughs> Now, it wouldn't be fair not to give you a gift for your wedding night. So, we'll go and get them for you. I'll just leave that about there. Just for you. This is for you, Kirsty. I know you and Ryan have rarely spent any time apart, which is very, very, very nice. Um, now, however, to make sure that you never spend any time apart again, I've took a little bit of a precaution. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll do this now, please. <laughs> Now this is how, 
I can get it on my wrist or something. But... Oh. 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 Look, he's doing it himself. I've got a bit of a confession because I bought them on the cheap as no keys. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit, uh, don't really want to ask, but does anybody have a set of keys for some handcuffs? <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. 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 For you, Ryan. <laughs> we all know, as previously mentioned, and everybody knows it, you've got an aversion to manual labour. And especially have a problem with erections of tents. <laughs> so I thought I'd give you a helping hand on your wedding night. It's an inspirational quote, and I like it. But I'm sure it's something hopefully you'll both use in your married life together. Some say it's a Mark Twain quote, some say it's by an unknown author, but I don't know. But I did spend many hours on the internet in the middle of the night. Unfortunately, my daughter's, my daughter's a pervert, and I'm still in the spare room. <laughs> 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 I'm not going now. Smack yourself in the face with it. Life is short. Break the rules. Forgive quickly. Kiss slowly. Love truly. Laugh uncontrollably. And never regret anything that made you smile. Twenty years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the bowlings. Sail away from the safe harbour. Catch the true wind in your sails. Explore. Dream. Discover. Now finally, I would like to propose two toasts. So I'm going to have to ask you to stand again, but if you're able to, of course. <laughs> now, firstly, please raise your glasses and join me in toasting those who can't be with us today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <You're done. laughs> and finally, please raise your glasses and join me in toasting the bride and groom. Kirsty and Ryan, the new Mr. and Mrs. Murray. Thank you very much.